Human flight. It is a symbol of human achievement and independence. The myth of Icarus demonstrates the power and danger inherent in flight. Flight also says something about one's body. Bodies that fly are like birds and gods, strong and free. Men have jealously guarded the power of flight for centuries. However, during the mid-20th century, women began to fly airplanes and then rocket ships. They did not have an easy time of it. Under pressure, in 1961, NASA agreed to evaluate female astronaut candidates in the FLATS, or First Lady Astronaut Trainees Program. Of the candidates, 13 women were selected and became known as the Mercury 13. Despite outstanding medical and psychological test results, NASA soon decided to cancel the program. Requirements were changed to include flight training at a military school that excluded women. Various other reasons for rejecting female astronauts were put forward, including the persistent concern that menstruation would cause problems in space. The American government had been suspicious of menstruation and aviation for many years. In 1941, the Army published a handbook called Fit to Fly. It stated that, During the menstrual period, women tend to become emotionally upset, and it is believed that several aircraft accidents have been due to this cause. In 1943, the Military Air Transport Command ordered its women pilots grounded for the week they menstruated. In fact, menstruation does not cause problems in flight. Women astronauts and pilots just use tampons. In 1963, Valentina Tereshkova became the first woman to travel into space. She orbited the Earth for three days. After Tereshkova's triumphant return, a joke began circulating that she should marry bachelor cosmonaut Andrian Nikolaev. The Soviet government caught wind of this rumor and pressured the two into marriage. In 1964, Tereshkova gave birth to a daughter. However, the space family soon fell apart and Tereshkova and Nikolaev were divorced. Tereshkova never returned to space. The Soviet Union disbanded the female cosmonaut program in 1969. While women were making political gains during the 60s, an American woman would not fly in space until Sally Ride made the trip in 1983. Around the time Tereshkova traveled into space, philosopher and psychoanalyst Jacques Lacan was formulating theories of subjectivity and sexuality. The phallus was an important concept in Lacanian psychoanalysis. He said that women lack the phallus, meaning not that they lack penises, but the symbolic power reserved for men in patriarchy. At the same time, women can be said to be the phallus in the sense that they symbolize nature or fullness of being without being able to possess or control this power. This attitude can be clearly seen in the 1969 book, The Secret World of the Baby. Inside his capsule, the baby is like a submerged swimmer, existing in fluid rather than air. His balloon of fluid is something like the capsule that astronauts live in when they fly into outer space. Inside his capsule, he does not feel the force of gravity or pull from the Earth. He is weightless, in much the same way as the astronauts are when they float free so far up in space. Tethered to the placenta, his supply base, he swims, floats in circles inside his watery space capsule. The fetus is described as male and as an active pilot of the mother. He lives off his mother but at the same time, he takes over her body so that she is a more efficient host for him.
while Tereshkova was allowed one flight as a pilot, she was quickly reinscribed as a mother after her return to Earth. Women astronauts are not so rare today. There are no medical arguments against female astronauts anymore. However, men are still anxious about women that fly. After the Challenger accident, a popular joke demonstrated this persistent fear. What were Krista McAuliffe's last words? Hey guys, what's this button? <laughs> <laughs> Bodies that fly are like birds and gods, strong and free. <laughs>